Hi guys, Ali here from AZ Training, your personal technical trainer. Today we're going to talk about provisioning packages. What is a provisioning package? Let's think about when you are going to configure a bring your own device. You have an environment, people are allowed to use their own personal devices for their work. But in order to make those devices compatible with your environment with your configurations and your settings or policies, you have to somehow have a control on those devices. Maybe you would like to have a series of users. Maybe you want to set up specific rules and configurations or any other things. So these all should be managed on those devices. How do we do that? We cannot ask the users to reset their computers and install our images. We cannot ask them to remove their personal data from their own personal computers? How are we going to enforce our settings, policies, or other settings that we might have? Yes, you guessed it right. The right answer is creating a provisioning package. A provisioning package is actually a small installation file which you can create and pass it to the users. They can run on their computers and it will make the changes that you need to create that computer and make that specific computer compatible with your organizations. How do we create a provisioning package? In order to create a provisioning package, you need to have Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. This is a part of a larger tool called Windows Application Deployment Toolkit. If you don't know how to download or install this toolkit, there is a video for that. I will put the link at the end of this video and in the comments. And speaking of the comments, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified when I create more videos for you. Also, leave in the comments section below what else would you like to see. The other method that you can get the Windows application deployment kit is installing it offline. For creating provisioning package, we only need one tool. Uh, you can even download that only tool, which is the configuration designer directly from Microsoft Store. We're going to do that as, as well. I have already downloaded and installed the ADK tools. And as you can see in this operating system, there is a new folder in the start menu called Windows Kit. If, again, if you need to see how to download and install this toolkit, please watch the video. That's the link is in the comments. What we need for today and creating a provisioning package is Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. So I'm going to run this tool and show you how we create provisioning package. We're going to go through a few steps, a few options, and a few samples that we can do. Once we create a package, we're going to take that package and import it into a Windows client. Perfect. Now that the tool has opened, we see on the left, we have a few wizards, which we can come uh, start and follow. And at the end, we have the advanced provisioning. We will cover most of it. So let's take a look at one of these for now. Provisioning a desktop device, that's one option. Provisioning for HoloLens devices. If you have HoloLenses that you would like to configure for your organizations, that's the, the way to go. If you would like to convert a computer to a kiosk device, I will create another separate video covering the kiosk. But if you need to create a provisioning package to convert a computer to a kiosk, that's another option for you. And at the same time, if you have mobile devices or Surface hubs, each one of these sections have their own wizard, which you can follow step by step and create your provisioning package. In this example, we're going to do a very simple test. Let's go with creating a provisioning desktop device. Once you select it, it is asking you, what do you like to call this project? All right, so it depends how many changes, how many settings would you like to include in your package? In this example, because we're not going to uh, specifically define anything, maybe we don't want to install an application or maybe we want, we don't know yet. We're just going to explore the options. So you can name it whatever you like, but it is recommended to call the project something that is meaningful for you 
and also meaningful for the clients as well. I will show you on the client side that why the name of this project might be important for you in the future. So in this example, I'm going to call it create local user. That's what I'm going to ask this package to do for me. Create finish. If you like, you can put a description, uh, which makes it easier to identify what's included in this package. Click finish. It will create a shell. Now, in this basic setup that we've selected, we see there are five different sections that we can complete in this wizard. First one, setting up the device, which you can set up a name for your computer. Uh, and if you have a product key, you can enter the product key right now. Also, if you would like to configure this device for a device that is being used in a shared environment, you can select that. It's mostly used for students and it would be best in the education environments. We will have a full video about the shared devices separately. Would you like to remove the pre-installed applications? We all know that when you install Windows operating system, there are a few applications that are installed by default. If you want, you can remove them all. Please note, if you select this option, the desktop or the destination who will install this provisioning package would be resetted. So this option will reset that device in order to remove those applications. So keep that in mind. Let's select the name. I'm going to call it Ali dash. And because I would like to give it a random number at the end, it, maybe I want uh, you have your comp a company name. Uh, and then you would like to give it a random number at the end. Or maybe I can call it AZ dash random. And I want it to be six digit number and person sign. So it is telling me to rename this computer to AZ dash a six digit random number. I'm not going to insert and in put any key numbers, serial numbers right now and going to the next step. Would you like to set up any network wireless for this device? Um, if you would like, you can, so for example, if you have your organization's wireless SSID and password, you can enter the SSID, select the network type, and accordingly, the Wi-Fi information that you need. In this example, I don't want to configure the Wi-Fi, so I'm going to skip it. Account management is what I really wanted to do at the beginning. So I have three options. In the account management, you can enroll that device into Active Directory. That is a perfect example when you have a local Active Directory. Or if you have an Azure Active Directory, you can just enroll it in Azure Active Directory. In our example, we don't have any of those. We would like to create a new local account. I'm going to call it AZ Admin and set a password for that. Click next. Next step is asking you if you would like to install any applications. I am not planning to install any applications, but as easy as it sounds and as easy as it looks like, you just need to click add applications, have access to the installer path of that application, browse it here and done. You give your application a name, my test app, for example, it's better to give it the right name and the proper name. Browse the installer file, click next. The application would be added in your package. Now, when you add an application to the package, what will happen when the user add the provisioning package, it, they would be prompted to complete the setup. You do not need to provide them with the source of the application. The source of the application would be embedded inside the provisioning package. If you would like to see how, it does, how does that work, leave a comment below and I will create another video for that. Lastly, would you like to add any certificates? As you see, there is, there is a um, warning message here that this section is not complete. We're going to talk about it in the future. Lastly, would you like to add any certificates? Um, we don't have any certificates right now, so I'm going to skip. Next. And lastly, the validations. Now we see 
that the wizard has found some error messages. Would you like to fix them now? Yes, definitely. We got to go back and take a look at our provisioning package. Why do we see that? Because we started it. Now I'm going to click cancel. I am not going to add any applications at this moment and go back to the last step. Finally, at the end, you can see a summary of the changes that you've made. We see that it's going to rename the device. It's not a shared device. We are not going to remove the pre-installed applications. We are not setting the network setting. We are not changing that. But we are creating a local user account called AZ Admin, and we are setting a password. No applications added, no certificates. Last, it is allowing you to protect your package by setting a password for that. The password should be between 8 to 16 characters. We can set a password so when the client wants to run it, they have to know the password. Or you can just say it's a lab environment. I don't need that password, so I'm going to go ahead and create the package. Now you see as quick as that, the package has been created. So where is it saved? It is showing us the location. You can click here. It takes you there. Or you can browse it uh, manually by going to your computer, Documents, Windows Imaging and Configuration, and you see the package name. What we're going to do now, we're going to transfer this package to a client computer that doesn't have any of these settings. I'm going to plug in a USB drive. Copy this package and paste it in my USB drive. Package is completed. And you can see there is an executable file and a series of security catalog, XML files, and XML documents plus the data file. Let's go and log in to our Windows client. What we're going to do here. We're going to connect the USB drive. So let's check this client. First of all, let's check the name of this computer. If we go to the settings on the system, we see that the, the VM is called desktop-AL1VB9E. Let's take a look at the number of users that exist, lusrmgr.msc. Going back to the users, we see what local administrator users already exist. We have a user called admin, a user called administrator, which is disabled, and nothing else. Let's go ahead and add this provisioning package. There are two options for adding a provisioning package. I can just double click this executable file and run it, or we can go to the settings. Go to the accounts. Work or school accounts. And select add or remove a provisioning package. And that's what we're going to do. Click add a package. Check the removable media. And as you see, it is not seeing any package. Why? The system is not seeing the package yet. The reason is when you're looking for the package, when the Windows looks into the media, it cannot identify folders. So what you need is to copy the entire content and paste it on the root of your removable media. Now, if I go back, go back one more time, click Add Package. And now when it's looking at the removable media, it can detect the create local user package that we created before. I'm going to select that one, click add. Are you sure? Yes, we are sure. Let's go ahead. So one, one final configuration, it is asking you, this package is going to cause a device to restart. 
make some changes to the device customization. It's going to change the device name. It might apply some policies and it might create local accounts. Would you like to do it? Yes, add it. So let's do it. It's going to restart our computer and we'll come back. Why is it restarting the computer? Because we asked to change the name and we know that changing the name requires a restart. I'm going to put the video on pause and wait for the restart to complete and then on pause once the restart is completed. All right. The restart is complete and Windows is logging back in with the user called admin because that's the only user that does not have any password associated to it and it will automatically log in. Once we log in, we can go and check do we have the settings that we created. First thing that we need to check is the computer name. Have we successfully renamed this computer? Let's take a look. As we see, the computer has been renamed to AZ with dash a six digit number. Next thing that I would like to see is the local users and computers, uh, uh, computer accounts. So what do I have here? Now I see that a new user has been created called AZ admin. And if I look at the properties of this user, I see that it is a member of administrator's account. So that's it, as easy as that, as easy as it looked, you can easily create a provisioning package and convert a device that is not compatible with your organization, compatible. You can enforce the policies that you want. You can install applications. You can enforce settings that you would like to have. Someone might ask, but we didn't have too many options. Yes, we did not have too many options, but there is an advanced method as well. If you would like to see the more options that we have, please leave a comment below and I will create the videos for that as well. And lastly, if you like to remove this package from this computer, you can continue the same method that you do, you did. You go to the accounts, worker school, and add or remove a provisioning package. When you go here, it will search for the packages that are already installed. We see the package is already installed. By selecting it, you have the option to remove it. If I click on the details, it will show me what's in that package and what did that package do. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you like more, please make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notified for the new content that's coming. Like and share and leave in the comment section below what else would you like to see. See you on, on the next video.